to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, checking in on his, uh, I think, I mean, he might be on headed to family vacation real quick. This guy works a lot. He's in D.C. He's in Yonkers. Give it up one time, Congressman Jamal Bowman. How you doing, sir? Thanks for the check-in. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, man. Appreciate it. Listen, we got two, we got, well, several important things, but um, first things first, you're running for re-election up there in Yonkers in your district, right? What's that, District 16, New York? District 16, yes. Edenwald and Wakefield in the Bronx, and we go all the way up to White Plains and everything in between. Um. Your what? Why should people reelect Jamal Bowman? I know, I know the Yonkers School District got a lot of money. I know Mount Vernon School District got a lot of money. You've been making sure that money is coming in from uh, the Joe, the the Biden administration, whether it was COVID relief or or just other promises to improve uh, infrastructure at, at schools in the Bronx, roads in the Bronx, jobs in uh, excuse me in Yonkers and uh and Edenwall. Um, but talk to the people about why they should keep you on the job. Yeah, it's not just about the money. It's about how we show up and meet people where they are. You know, this district was represented by someone else for 31 years, and he was criticized for representing one part of the district but not really the other. And my job from the very beginning was all about going into Eden Wall, going into Wakefield, going into the hood in Yonkers, in Mount Vernon, in New Rochelle, with communities that have been historically left out of the conversation. And working with those communities, whether they be CBOs that are legacy CBOs like the YMCA, or CBOs that you know are brand what's a, new. What's a CBO? A community-based organization. So Got one it. example of that is a YMCA, right? Got but it. then there are other, but then there are other organizations like Snug and other Stand Up to Balance organizations that really take a public health approach to public safety as one topic. So I've done a lot of work with them to help bring resources to those smaller organizations who really meet families, most, the most vulnerable families where they are, to support them in a variety of areas, whether it's uh, jobs, entrepreneurship, mental health, safety, and the like. Um, so I'm very proud of that. We've also brought in over $225 million to the district to help with everything from flood mitigation, uh, to after-school programs, to employment for formerly incarcerated people, so we just show up, man. We show up. We listen. And do, do you we feel learn. like? Do you feel like the the residents in your district, if if I was to pull up in District 16, they would say Jamal Bowman's been putting that work in for us? I, I believe so, sir. Yes, I, I think they will. Yes. Well, I mean, that's reason enough to keep you on the job because, you know, it is, while it while it is about how you show up, it's also about how uh, showing up affects people's life in a real way and improves their life in a real way. Um, well, and so that is also, often about also, money and, and support in financial ways. Yeah, it's also about taking risk and challenging a system that historically hasn't worked for them. So this year I've done a lot to take tough votes and speak out about issues that people don't often talk about, like white supremacy and structural racism. And when I do that, you know, the, it really resonates with the people in the district. I hear time and time again, you speak for me. And I really appreciate that. And our polling has consistently showed that, you know, over the last couple of years, man, our favorability rating in the last poll was like 65%. Um, so we're just going to keep that going. And, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully people come out and support me on or before uh, August 23rd. Early voting started this week? Yes, Saturday. Early voting started Saturday, and it ends on the 21st. Uh, I want to close out because I know uh, we, this is a quick check-in. We'd love to have you back in the studio sometime uh, to talk about the progressive um, caucus within the Democrats and how the Democrats – uh, are are leaning in because you are a part of that progressive caucus within the Democrats and you have a lot to say about moderates and, de and progressives within the Democratic caucus and what the plan is moving forward. Yourself, AOC and other individuals, uh, Mondaire Jones and others that are very, uh, you know, active and vocal about progressive ideas and ideals. But specifically right now, the use of rap lyrics um, to be used in a court of law and locking up and incarcerating uh, uh, 
rappers uh, and using that as evidence. You are uh, you have or you have recently just unveiled a bill around this, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Tell us more about that. So the Rap Act is to is designed to ensure that rap lyrics aren't used to criminalize, indict, and convict artists based on their art form. Uh, what we've seen over the last several years, uh, we've seen about 500 or so cases across the country where rap lyrics have been, you know, people have used, prosecutors have tried to use rap lyrics uh, in court cases. And there's a 17-year-old there's a, um, who was convicted to life in prison, Tommy, Tommy Kennedy, uh, basically with a trial that began with his rap lyrics and rap lyrics were used as a central piece of evidence. And that's the point here. When you're trying to, when you're trying a case, if you have hard evidence, forensic evidence, witnesses, all of that, that's different. You cannot start your trial with rap lyrics. Rap is free speech. Rap is art. It's poetry. It's literature. It's personification. It's metaphor. It's simile. It's journalism. It's storytelling. And we're not criminalizing Stephen King for his novels. We can't criminalize. We're not even criminalizing the former president, Donald Trump, for things that he right. said on the microphone. Correct. And, and it was a clear when you talk about what Donald Trump said on Twitter about January 6th to get people down there to be a part of the attack on the Capitol. The fact that he's not being criminalized for that yet is is preposterous. So this is another example of targeting uh, black men and men of color mostly. Um, it's another way to criminalize that genre. And again, when you compare it to other genres of music, there's no comparison. 500 or more cases over the last several years compared to about five cases in other genres of music. Uh, I appreciate this rap act, and I know there's a lot of people working on this um, in support, and we thank you, Jamal Bowman, for your work. Uh, Y'all look him up if you live in Edenwall, if you live in Yonkers, District 16, look up Representative John, uh, Jamal Bowman. He's representing you on the federal level. Uh, thank you for your time today, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry about the sound. Peace and love, family. I'll Thanks, see you Yes, man. We'll talk soon.